Um, our next speaker is Stephen Abrams from uh, the California Digital Library. He's the Associate Director of the University of California Curation Center. And he'll be talking to us about libraries and research data curation. Uh, our next two speakers um, will be giving a library perspective, and the third speaker will be talking a little bit about a data center in a library and collaborative, uh, doing collaborative research. So, uh, Stephen, take it away. Great. Thank you, Julie. I uh, appreciate having the opportunity to talk to you this afternoon um, because research data management has become um, a very important programmatic activity over the last couple of years at the UC Curation Center. Uh, I think at this point in the day, um, all of these things uh, hopefully are, uh, are self-evident to, to all of us, so I'm not going to really spend any, any more time on that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the library's interest in all of this, which is longstanding um, and arises uh, from our mission and our role of um, mediating between uh, our patrons and uh, content that is of interest to them in meaningful ways. Uh, and we try to do this by offering a range of solutions um, across the full uh, research and uh, curation life cycle. Uh, unfortunately, there are all too many uh, barriers towards the wider adoption of uh, good data curation, data sharing, and data reuse. And I think um, these arise both on the uh, consumer and consuming side. Uh, it is still far too difficult to find data of interest, um, as well as on the production side, where people are faced with uh, often unfamiliar processes uh, and tools. Um, there's this very real potential for uh, loss of control over one's data, um, and in just in general, there, there might be uh, inadequate guidance on, on the best way to proceed. Uh, we believe that the answer to all of these things is to provide better access to tools and resources, and I'm going to be talking very briefly um, about a, a number of library solutions uh, in these four areas um, that are trying to uh, ameliorate uh, these various barriers. And I'll be illustrating the, these with a number of uh, tools that are drawn from the, uh, the roster of, uh, of UC3 services. Uh, so to begin with, um, I think the intention behind a data publication is to uh, try to gradually build up the same um, level of critical uh, infrastructural support for data that has uh, long existed for traditional publications. Um, this starts off with um, associating with the data set uh, a unique, persistent, uh, and actionable identifier. Uh, by actionable, I mean that it should be easily and automatically resolvable to the data set itself. Uh, such an identifier can then be used as part of uh, stable citation. Uh, stability here meaning that um, regard, however uh, the data set may move from location to location, uh, different providers, uh, none of that should invalidate um, the resolution of the identifier to the data set in its then current location. Uh, and as Victoria uh, just mentioned in, in her talk, what's very important is to have uh, a bi-directionality of these references. Um, a paper should point to its data, uh, and data should point to uh, papers that are based on it. So our solution in this area is a service that is called EasyID. Um, it allows you to uh, generate both ARC and DOI identifiers. Um, these identifiers can be associated with various types of uh, scientifically meaningful descriptive metadata. Um, the resolution targets are updatable, so we can uh, very easily deal with the fact that uh, that data often moves around for various purposes. Uh, the data is automatically um, harvested and aggregated by the data site consortium. Um, and uh, later on in this year, uh, the metadata will also become um, available for discovery through uh, both the Primo and the Web of Knowledge uh, and Web of Science um, aggregation and indexing services. And just to give a flavor of how all this uh, uh, actually works now, um, a DOI that has been created in the EasyID service um, can be set to uh, resolve to a data set's uh, current location, in this case, uh, the Dryad Repository of uh, Environmental Science. 
If you go to the catalog record in Dryad, you will see that there is already a reference to uh, a number of publications for this particular data set. Um, basically, we're using references at this point to the article level DOI. And if you take a close look at the reference section of the paper, you'll see again that there's a back pointer um, taking you back to the Dryad repository. So again, we've completed that circle of, of, of bi-directionality. Um, all of this is also um, being aggregated into um, a, a centralized catalog that's operated by the data site consortium, um, where it is also exposed for harvesting um, and availability by uh, a variety of commercial search engines, which um, our experience uh, shows is increasingly becoming the, uh, the, 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 pr the, the primary mechanism by which uh, people at, at, at UC uh, seem to be finding data. Uh, I think it is uh, certainly uh, true that for many in the research community, data curation um, involves a very uh, unfamiliar set of concepts and practices and jargon and so forth. Um, and while it would always be useful to um, uh, undergo various types of educational efforts to try to uh, make researchers more conversant with these things, we think that it may in fact be uh, more efficacious to spend our time trying to augment our systems rather than trying to change behaviors. Uh, um, the idea he, here being that we can embed um, curation best practices into the tools and workflows uh, that scientists are already familiar with and are already using. Uh, one example of this, uh, this is based on the recognition that for many, uh, Excel is often the database of choice or at least the database of practice. Um, so the, uh, the Data Up project has created an Excel add-in and uh, an equivalent Azure web service that can automate a number of key curation functions. It can perform a best practices check. It actually examines the spreadsheet. It looks for things that are uh, um, various features that might be inimical to uh, long-term curation. It will automatically uh, correct things um, if, if you so desire. It will also make recommendations for features that you uh, may, may, not be, may not have used but probably should. It integrates uh, directly with the, oh, I'm sorry, uh, got ahead of myself. Uh, it provides an opportunity to augment uh, various types of scientific uh, um, descriptive metadata with, uh, with the spreadsheet. It interacts with the EasyID service to automatically generate and bind um, a unique identifier to the data set. And it actually performs the transfer of this data set to, um, to a repository for long-term um, curation management. In conjunction with colleagues at the University of New Mexico Library, we've actually set up um, a special purpose repository uh, for environmental science data sets. This is an open, freely available, open access data repository called OneShare. Um, it's actually based on some repository technology that we've developed um, at, the, at UC3 called the, the Merit Repository, which is also integrated with the Data One um, network, um, which is a federated network um, of repositories in the earth and environmental sciences. What, that, what this means is that anything that gets put into the one share is automatically going to get harvested um, and is available for discovery through the, um, the Data One Mercury search interface which aggregates together um, a, a very large number of otherwise independent repositories. So perhaps as important as all the things that uh, DataUp um, actually does, um, equally important are the things that you are no longer going to have to do. Um, you don't have to understand the intricacies of uh, various metadata schemas. You don't have to know how to represent them properly um, in, in syntactically correct XML. You don't have to know how to go out and, uh, and uh, register an identifier and keep it up to date, um, how to package up your data in a way that's acceptable to a repository, or how to um, actually um, understand the protocol for actually submitting things, um, as well as the harvesting and aggregation by um, other external services. So we think that this is a, um, a quite simple idea, but we think nevertheless it's a very uh, powerful one, and we're very much interested in trying to apply these, uh, these same sort of uh, behaviors to uh, a variety of other uh, tools and services. Um, one of the main um, um, 
problem points that are that is often raised as we go out and talk to our faculty um, is this concern about the uh, loss of control, um, particularly over the dissemination and, and use of uh, published research results. Um, we think that uh, one uh, partial answer to this is through um, enforceable data use agreements that provide an opportunity for uh, the explicit assertion of license requirements uh, and terms of use. This has been implemented in uh, another repository called DataShare that is a collaboration between us and uh, colleagues at the uh, UC San Francisco Library, um, the Clinical and Translational Science Institute, uh, and the Center for Imaging of Neuro, um, Neurodegenerative Diseases. Uh, and it's very simple. Whenever you get to the point of actually trying to uh, retrieve uh, a data set from the repository, you uh, will get this, uh, this pop-up that lays out the explicit terms of use. Um, you have to um, give positive acceptance of this uh, in order to get access to the underlying data. At that point, um, both you as the consumer will receive an email um, laying out the exact terms that you've just agreed to. The content owner will also receive this so um, that uh, you as a content owner have a notification about um, uh, who is, uh, is using your, your data. So again, um, a simple idea, but we think um, uh, hopefully will become uh, an effective one in dealing uh, with this question of uh, control. Gosh, I need to talk faster. Um, increasingly, um, the impetus behind uh, long-term data curation has, has moved from being a discretionary activity to being one that's increasingly being required, both um, as, uh, as, as either as a, a, a point of institutional policy or as a precondition for publication or in grant funding. So the, uh, the data management planning tool is an online service that provides guidance and resources for the creation of um, data management plans that can be incorporated into your funding proposals. Um, obviously, it allows you to edit. Um, uh, you can also publish and share uh, data management plans. And importantly, it is customizable both for uh, specific funding agency requirements as well as for um, uh, both disciplinary and institutional resources. So uh, right now we have 19 requirement templates, including most of the NSF directorates and divisions. And there are uh, 43 institutional resource sets so that if, if you are a member of one of those institutions at the point at which you log on, uh, you will receive customized guidance um, that has been created by administrators at your particular institution. So I think I will just uh, end up here by um, hopefully uh, that I have convinced you that libraries are um, um, a good and natural partner uh, to the research community uh, that we're able to bring to the table um, uh, quite extensive experience in the uh, curation, preservation, and dissemination of digital assets. Uh, in many cases, we have a very deep uh, subject area specialization in the STEM disciplines. Um, and we are very used to uh, collaborating with groups on campus and particularly IT groups, data centers, as well as other institutions. Um, and that uh, hopefully giving you a little bit of a sense of um, uh, the, f the full range of, of, uh, of, of solutions that can be provided to you uh, by your library or libraries at other, other institutions. So I will end up there. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Sure. Uh, we have time for one question. Uh, thank you, Stephen. <clears throat> and, uh, it's readily apparent how these tools can be used by libraries, but I'm wondering, um, are there opportunities for publishers to work with uh, any of these tools to facilitate, for instance, uh, more effective discovery? Uh, certainly, any 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 of the tools that that um, that we deploy are are openly available. Um, obviously, geared towards the uh, uh, initially geared towards the UC community, but um, other people at other institutions. Um, and uh, there's no there's no technical or policy bar from um, from publishers uh, becoming involved in any of these initiatives. Okay, thank you. Thank you.